Hello. Don't have much time this week, so here's a quick Nuzlocke for you. Here on the screen are the usual hardcore Nuzlocke rules. I believe people are mostly familiar with them. I've included these in the video description as well, so you can read it there if you need a reminder. Continuing my streak of evolution methods Nuzlocke, this time it's time evolutions, meaning I can only use Pokemon whose lines evolve at a certain time of day. That means we've got 7 that we can use in Pokemon Platinum. It's been a while since my last Nuzlocke, so before this run I had practiced this a number of times. There are a couple of spots that prove to be most challenging, but we'll cover them when we get to it. Just a quick note, if you like these type of videos, please consider subscribing and leaving a like and comment and all that YouTube shenanigans. It really helps a lot. We are Fool again. This guy is Larry, and this is Professor Facial Hair. This is Dusk, and we got a throwaway Turtwig. He would be our HM slave in the future, and we named him Normie. This guy is called Looker, and this is Poketch Man. The run can't exactly start without our first proper Pokemon, so we headed north of Jubilife and caught a Badoo, naming it Rosabo. And this was probably the most painful part of the run, running around. Why did we have to run? This was to increase the friendship of Rosabo, enabling us to evolve it early. It took around 30,000 steps if I recall correctly, and Rosabo finally evolved into a Rosalia. Beating Harry wasn't the hardest thing in the world, as stacking growth and making use of the stun spell really helped. Harry's Pokemon also didn't have the best of moves at this point. We fetched Rourke and dominated him in a one-sided gym battle with Mega Drains. Professor Facial Hair and Dusk got into some trouble, so we helped them out. It's nice to be the good guy. Some galactic shenanigans over at the Windworks and we get to face Commander Mars in a battle. We stacked growths while we could and dished out some damage. Oof, that was close. I didn't really expect to run into trouble so quick, honestly. This battle never gave me this much trouble while practicing. We blitzed through the forest while avoiding as many trainers as we could, and arrived in Eterna City where we met Perry again, and Cyrus. We caught a Chingling east of Eterna City and named him Lingbo. As we were preparing ourselves for another long marathon to evolve Lingbo, Best Waifu made her debut and left us with a gift. Whee! We magically changed time with our mysterious powers and evolved Lingbo into a Chimeco. Chimeco? At first, I thought this Gardenia fight was going to be a lot more difficult, hence why I always kept the Chimeco as a backup, but with Rosabo stacking growths, it's quite manageable. None of Gardenia's Pokemon are able to seriously damage Rosabo, and spamming attacks works just fine. We got our second badge, and here comes one of the run enders in this Nuzlocke. At least in theory. Jupiter. I tried a lot of things beforehand for this battle, since I kept getting destroyed by Jupiter's Skunk Tank. The Zubat was never an issue, but this Godforsaken Skunk just hit too hard for my only two Pokemon. I found that Lingbo's Yawn was a lot more reliable than Rosabo's Grass Whistle, since it often missed and I would then sacrifice a lot of Rosabo's health. Then, if the Skun Tank managed to wake up and score a Night Slash, I would still have a lifeline with the Orenberry. Managing to pull off three growths was quite lucky, and I used Giga Drain at the same turn the Skun Tank woke up, so thankfully we were able to get by. In all honesty, if I lost here, I would have stopped this run right here, no questions asked. There was just too much running involved to be able to progress with the Snuzlocke. In any case, we saved the Pokemon and the Bicycle Dude, and received an egg that would hatch into another egg from Best Waifu. Because I had leveled up my team quite a lot to beat Jupiter, the next challenge came in the form of not overleveling. Our next available capture was here beneath a cycling road thingy, a Gligar. We captured one, although almost losing Lingbo in the process, and named it Glybo. With one more Pokemon in the party, we safely made it to Jubilife and were able to avoid overleveling and losing our team members. The Earthquake TM from Wayward Cave really helped as well. Bibbe gave us an Eevee, another time evolution buddy, and we named it Beau. Fantina, the famed French lady, was fetched from the contest halls, enabling us to challenge the gym. But not before running another marathon to be able to evolve Beau. At this point, I'm pretty sure we'd be as lean as some of those pro marathon runners. We were able to complete the friendship prerequisite for Beau, and had him evolve into an Umbreon. No special reason here, I just never used an Umbreon before. I wanted to try it out instead of going for Espeon again. Then I took a break for a few days from the Nuzlocke. Just a fair warning here, because of the break I completely forgot my train of thought and general strategy for this so you're going to see an extremely risky and pretty dumb battle. Up against French Lady, Glybo took the first step and took down the Duskull with fair ease. She then sent out her Miss Magius where Glybo was left confused after the first set of moves. After using knockoff, I'm not sure why I took so long here. But when I finally did make my decision, I had forgotten that Glybo was confused and chose to do another attacking move. You can only imagine my horror and relief to see Glybo shook off the confusion. Huge relief. I immediately switched to Lingbo to tank a Shadow Ball, extremely risky move that I don't remember why again, 
I guess I thought putting the Miss Magus to sleep was more important than keeping the Chimiko. Anyway, Lingbo would switch out for Bo, who didn't have any dark type moves. Nice. So, after wasting a turn, Rosibo was finally sent out, where he used up a turn for growth and finally ended the Miss Magus. The rest of the fight with the Haunter shouldn't have been too eventful, right? Holy crap, what was I doing? Rosibo cheated death once more, and we won the badge. I decided to brush up on my strats again before moving on. The Nelly fight was next, and thankfully we regained our senses and didn't have too much of a difficult time with this. Glybo came out and spammed feint attacks for the Steravia, Rosibo would then come out and end the Buizel, and we switched back to Glybo to take out the Monferno with an Earthquake, and finally Lingbo had to wrap things up with Nelly's Rosalia. Not a perfect fight, but much better. Nothing much happened in between towns, but we had another encounter that we could capture. Meet Chambo the Chansey, another time evolution line. Then, as we always do in a Pokemon game with a game corner in it, we went gambling. A lot. All for the TMs, baby. We grabbed the Aerial Ace TM for Glybo, as well as the Razor Fang for later use. We spent our legal coins at the prize shop and headed over to meet our next obstacle, Mei Lin Lin. Glybo for our victory, no concerns were needed in this battle. We got our fourth badge and we skedaddled over to the warehouse sector of the Galactic Hideout, helping out Dusk with her Pokedex woes. She's turning out to be quite useless in this game. We got the Fly HM, and of course, we had no team members capable of learning Fly. Glybo, even if he had evolved, wouldn't have been able to soar through the sky. It's quite sad. So we headed a tad west from Veilstone and captured Astravia for our Fly-related matters. We would then grind for some sweet EVs after this. We magically changed time again and grinded for Glybo's levels, which resulted in his evolution into a Gliscor. As a Gliscor, Glybo was pretty much quite overpowered at this stage of the game. He completely annihilated Gary's team after stacking a couple of Source Dances. For Luchador Man, well, Rosebu proved to be an invaluable team member once more after he stacked more growths and decimated Crash Awake's team. With the Fen Badge in our pocket, we exited the gym to find the Sprite of Sinnoh under a very serious bomb threat. We chased this galactic member around the beach and resort, finally catching up to him near the lakefront. We bested him in a Pokemon battle and had a nice moment with Best Waifu before Carrie ruined it for us. The Psyducks were healed by our mystical powers and we reached Celestic Town, where we ran Best Waifu's errant, ultimately meeting Cyrus again. You know, after doing quite a lot of these Nuzlocks, I do wonder how I can tell the story of these Pokemon games a different way every time. It gets trickier after every Nuzlocke, unfortunately. Before challenging Cyrus, we evolved Shanbo into a Blissey. This Cyrus battle was opened by Shanbo, who finished the Sneasel with a Flamethrower. Shanbo did pretty well against the Golbat, but things got too risky, prompting the switch to Glybo. Glybo then cruised the rest of the battle with aerial aces. Cyrus absolutely disrespected Best Waifu's grandmother and fled the scene. Ah look, Best Waifu. Best Waifu gave us surf, but no one in our team could surf. So, made a quick trip to the swamps and caught this bad boy, we called him Surfy. Time for another rival battle, and guess who was chosen to represent the fools? That's right, Swords Dancing Glypo. It always feels good to sweep Larry's team, I have to say. For once in my life, I decided to clear Iron Island first before challenging Byron's gym, enabling us to get this Riolu egg. We, you guessed it, ran around some more, trying to warm up this egg with our body heat. It finally hatched and we gained another team member, Riobo. We revived our time-changing powers and evolved Riobo into a Lucario. Fun times. Rosabo also joined the Evolution Gang, achieving his final form, a Roserade. I decided to use Riobo for Byron, similarly stacking Swords Dances to begin the fight. Ryobo almost dying to the Thunderbolt definitely gave me a scare, but he pulled through. Byron's team could not handle the attack power of this fighting canine. Explosion time. We all know how this part of the game works by now. We were each assigned a lake to go to, and Harry took off real quick. Of course, being the world savior that we are, we ended up going to all three of them. First up was Lake Valor and Saturn, where Lingbo was able to take care of his Golbat at the beginning of the fight. Glybo stacked three sword dances, then took care of the Bronzer with faint attack, and an earthquake for the Toxic Croak. Next up was Lake Verity, where Dusk wasn't really pulling her own weight. I tried to sweep Mars's team with Glybo, but the poison damage was getting a bit too much. After taking care of her Golbat, Lingbo came out for her Bronzor for some reason, then I finally switched to Rosabo. Rosabo Giga drained the Bronzor, and the following for Ugly. Rosabo is proving to be quite of a glass cannon here. Fast forward to Lake Acuity, where Jerry made fun of us for being too slow. This a-hole. It was at this lakefront that we caught our final team member, a Sneasel. She was nicknamed Weebo, just because. Facing candies. I had mixed feelings about this one. Ryobo was able to take out her Sneasel, Pillow Swine, and Abomasnow easily enough, 
and I switched to Bo for her Frostlass. I had enough faith in Bo that he could tank all of the Frostlass's attacks and hail pellets, but I didn't expect it to be this close. At least it was never this close in my practice runs. I guess I scored some pretty high damage rolls then, but if I were to receive just one crit here, I would have lost Bo. But no matter, we got the next badge and moved on. Carrie apparently had lost to Jupiter and found himself at rock bottom. Well, served them right for making fun of us for being too slow. We went through the Galactic HQ in Veilstone City, snoop around a company meeting, and illegally opened some doors with a stolen keycard. But it's okay because, you know, we're trying to save the world here. We ended up in a battle with Cyrus and immediately stacked three sword dances with Ryobo. Of course, what else did you expect? The Sneasel was blasted away with an Aura Sphere, the Honchkrow with Strength, as well as the Crobat. We faced Saturn again here, and nothing much had changed. Source Dance stacked with Glybo, and we went on to decimate his team. We freed the Lake Trio and let Sharon praise himself, as always. At Spear Pillar, having Glybo in my team was quite the relief. This battle usually takes me a lot longer, but spamming Earthquake sure made it a lot faster. It did kill all of Mary's Pokemon as collateral, but my conscience is super clear. He didn't seem to mind as he healed our Pokemon though. Cyrus was finally beginning to show its true colors here as he tried to summon both Dialga and Palkia. Giratina was ready to spoil his plans and so did we and Best Waifu here. This meant we had to go through the distortion world again though. Gotta love this part. We solved the puzzle, I can't count how many times I've finished this now, and with the help of the Lake Trio, we were able to reach Cyrus. Now, this battle. I had a lot of trouble during my practice runs for this battle, mainly due to the fact that I would always lose a team member here. While I was doing this run, I was actually quite scared that I would wipe to Cyrus, but I had to try my luck. Defeating the Houndoom was easy enough, Glybo outsped the Fire Dog and killed it with one Earthquake. Cyrus then sent out his Weavile and I switched to Ryobo. Ryobo had to tank two Ice Punches with the first one hitting a crit. This wasn't very pleasant. The Aura Sphere that came after thankfully was enough to take down the Weavile. Again, I know I'm not playing around crits here. Then the Gyarados came out and my solution to this hard hitting wall was to confuse it and tank hits as Bo dished out some damage himself. I actually had planned to sack Bo here if I needed to, but decided against it at the last minute, seeing as Bo was fortunate enough to survive that last waterfall. I sent out Rosabo next, tanking an earthquake on the switch but ultimately downing the Gyarados with a sludge bomb. I thought Cyrus would heal here, but I was bamboozled. Then the Honchkrow. My only chance of winning at this point was switching to Glybo, but there was no way I would be able to set up source dances while tanking hits from this bird. It really didn't help that I had to bring Surfy along for the surf ride in this world. Curse you, Surfy. So, Shanbo, my sacking of choice. She got hit with the crit too. What a way to rub salt on the wound. But due to Chambo's sacrifice, Glybo was able to stack two sword dances and one shot at the Honchko with an Excisor. I was at a loss on what to do for the Crobat, but thankfully the Aerial Ace was enough. Not that I had any other choice. Honestly, I was just glad I only lost one Pokemon here. I was really dreading this fight. Best Waifu healed our team, and off we go to defeat Giratina. Both scored two paybacks, nice and easy. Cyrus definitely wasn't too happy about all this, and we decided to leave him here in the Distortion world. We went back to Professor Facial here, and it seemed like he was worried about us. A lot. The path to Sunny Shore didn't provide any challenge at all, and we had to convince Volkner to come back to the gym at the behest of Flinty Man. We would meet Flinty Man again later, under very different circumstances. You probably already know that, I don't really know why I'm trying to hype up Flint like some sort of final boss. And then it was time for Volkner. Nice, we got all the badges, ready to qualify for the Pokemon League. Before we went on to challenge the League though, we had to battle Gary for the final time. Nice, now we'll really challenge the League. Well, not before changing the world time with our magical powers and evolving Weeaboo into a Weavile. We also spelunked for some shards and taught Weebo Ice Punch. Now we challenge the League. Gotta keep the channel tradition alive, folks. Here's my team for the Pokemon League. Lingbo the Chimaco. Bo the Umbreon, Rosabo the Roserate, Ryobo the Lucario, Weabo the Weavile, and finally Glybo the Gliscor. And Elite Four time. Bugsy. Three sword dances to open the battle and then Aerial Ace, Earthquake, Earthquake, Aerial Ace, Aerial Ace. Feels good. Rosabo was up, opening with a Giga Drain. The Gliscor was next, two Giga Drains. Another Giga Drain for the Golem, and Petal Dances for the Rhyperior and Hippodon. Another one down, and it was finally time for Flinty Man. Glybo stacked another set of sword dances and decimated everyone with earthquakes. This Pokemon is a godsend. Next was Lucian, and, well, let's just say the moment I hit the third source dance, I knew it was over. Good times. 
Finally, it was time for best waifu. The spirit tomb had pretty hard, so Glyba was only able to stack two sword dances. After an earthquake, he was able to one-shot the spirit tomb, as well as the malatak that came after, though we did score a crit on it. I thought we could take out the togekiss, but no dice. It survived on the tiniest of health, and Glyba went down. R.I.P. buddy. Lingbo was next, but boy he sucked. He couldn't take out the togekiss and died himself. No R.I.P. for you, buddy. Ryobo was next, and a strength took out the togekiss. Next was best waifu's Lucario, initiating the Lucario vs Lucario battle. Ryobo's Aura Sphere hit first, and it was enough to down the opposing Lucario. Ryobo would then die to best waifu's Garchomp. I'm wishing a semi-RIP Ryobo. Ryobo made her battling debut, one-shotting the Garchomp with an Ice Punch, as well as her Roserade that came after. We defeated all of best waifu's Pokemon and won the league, completing the Nuzlocke as well. And thus concludes my Evolution Hardcore Nuzlocke series, where I try out different Nuzlocke's with varying methods of evolutions. Do leave a comment suggesting what video I could do next, preferably something non monotype run. I feel like there are enough of monotype Nuzlocke videos going around. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Do take care.